Hi all, let's continue our look at the evolution of chess style and our notable game today will be another of David Bronstein. So this is, I'm taking you on the lead up to the encounter with Mikhail Botvinnik for the world title challenge match. But this was a very important tournament for the candidates to meet uh, Mikhail Botvinnik to decide the, the, the main candidate. And this game was David Bronstein against Lasso Zabo. So let's see what happened. D4. From David Bronstein and we see a Nimzo engine emerge and now a3 so this is like a pet system that David Bronstein used in this tournament with great success actually against many different players so here Bishop takes c3 b takes after castles we see now an interesting move f3 and it's a very logical move just to go for e4 black plays now knight h5, quite often d5 is popular as well. Knight h5 means that queen h4 check needs to be parried here, because otherwise then they follow knight takes g3 if white's not careful. Uh, and a good way of doing this is knight h3 to parry queen h4 check now. Black played f5, for example with check now, knight f2, and we're protecting the rook. So that knight g3 we can just take and we've got the rook protected. So knight h3 looks a little bit strange maybe to those that haven't seen it before, but it's the pretty standard way of addressing queen h4 check here. Black plays f5, we see e4, c5, so black's trying to keep the center closed and locked down. White now plays e5, so he's gaining, it seems, a nice space advantage in the center. After knight c6, we see f4, which opens up the queen attacking the knight. Black here just plays g6, supporting knight, and also it means knight g7 becomes possible if the knight needs to go back. After bishop e2, the knight doesn't actually need to go back immediately. b6 is played, and the reason for that, well, if takes here, this wasn't played, but there's queen h4 check, and this is actually quite okay for black. This kind of position is okay for black. Uh, for example, here black can play even a temporary pawn sack, and white's pawns are pretty shattered. The bishop's going to be great. White wants to avoid this, so instead white castles, keeping his important light square bishop, and the knight does go back here, bishop e3, and it seems white has a pleasant enough position. Except are these double pawns a cause for concern? Black tries to target c4 here c takes c takes although undoubling seems strange it means frontal pressure can be exerted on c4 surely at some point bishop a6 we see here queen a4 protecting the pawn and hitting the bishop black plays queen c8 rook fc1 it looks as though things like bishop f3 and maybe d5 look a little bit scary with that rook looking at the queen we see rook b8 now rook a b1 keeping black tied down so white does seem to be enjoying a, a nice space advantage with the bishop pair here it seems a very nice position indeed has emerged for white here knight a5 and now knight g5 provoking black you know to try and kick the knight away would cause some weaknesses black instead offers an exchange of queens with queen c6 and white rejects that with queen b4 which also means here actually the queen can bounce like this to h4 potentially to try and force black into a concession like h5 later. We see actually here the move queen c7 being played, which steps away from d5. That could also be a cause for concern in this particular position because if you look at this position, if that opens up, then the bishop's attacked. So this could be nasty as well, d5. So black stepped away at least from d5 with that move. And d5 is actually played now. And here there's still a concern about the rook hitting the queen. So black cannot comfortably take without exposing his queen. Knight b7 is played, trying to set up at least a blockade on c5. Queen e1 though, so the switch to the king side is very interesting from the queen side in this game. Knight c5 now. Uh, in fact, in this position, c5 is dangerous with the queen sitting there. Uh, for example, if black played a move like rook f8, c5 hits the bishop here. 
And this position we got C takes B6, double attacking the queen. That would be unpleasant. So yeah, keeping the blockade now, knight C5. Queen H4, provoking weakness, H5. Bishop F3 now, covering that E4 square more. And the knight seems very nice and happy on G5, unable to be kicked. But how can white actually break through here? Is he going to break through on the king side? Rook BC8. We see d6 gaining some space. Queen d8. Queen g3 now. And it's this g6 pawn seems a bit of a concern. Black now plays an aggressive looking move, but what does it actually do? It hits the rook for a moment and tries to win a pawn. Is this a little bit on the greedy side though? Is this being welcomed by white? White just plays rook c3 here and has a trap been set for Zabo here by David Bronstein. What could possibly go wrong with winning a pawn on c4 in this position? Well, if black takes with the rook, then rook takes d3. So black takes with the bishop, but he does actually leave a weakness of the last move. That b7 square is not covered. That's the scientific change of the position here, the weakness of the last move. And white pounces on that fact immediately in this position. Bishop b7, yes. Bishop b7, and this is really quite annoying for black. Uh, if the rook just casually moves, well, then we, we just take on c4. And if rook takes b7, then we have rook c3. And where does the knight go? It can't go back to c5 because we can just snap it off and we've got that pin. So that would be very bad. So black is actually after bishop b7 losing the exchange, it seems. So black plays b5, losing the exchange for a pawn. But unfortunately, the queen is now a little bit further away from g6. The attention again is drawn on g6 here. Knight f3, threatening both knight h4 and queen takes g6. King h7, knight h4, dragging the queen to protect g6. But now the attention is on these pieces again, and particularly this knight is slightly awkward. We see this move, bishop d4. And the knight is pretty trapped here. Black seems completely helpless uh, in that he's going to lose material. Two pieces for the rook here. And he's pretty passive here. He resigned in this position. So it did seem like a, an overwhelming success for the opening choice. This early a3 system against the Nimzo, the f3. Knight h5 has a certain popularity to it. This knight h3 uh, antidote seemed to work quite well to knight h5. White seemed to have a pleasant position in the center and on the queen side and was able to switch back to the king's side and combine threats on both sides of the board. And in fact, it's black's aggressive knight d3, which led to that poor knight being trapped as well. So an interesting game and uh, one praised a little bit by Mikhail Botvinnik in his secret notebook. He was keeping notes of all of Bronstein's key games in this tournament. So he noted him it was like a closed game as well, which uh, Bronstein had played very well here. OK, I hope you got something from this. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.